Hi, this is Julian for Pro Tools Expert, and this time I'm looking at the new Spec Ops plugin from Unfiltered Audio. This is a spectral processor. Um, what I think what I take that to mean is that it's based around FFT analysis. Uh, you're probably familiar with FFTs in their use in spectrum analyzers. They're a mathematical way of splitting up a complex signal into its frequencies and kind of doing stuff on a per frequency basis. Uh, it's my very untechnical explanation of it. However, what this means is that you can do lots and lots of interesting things in a very kind of mathsy technical way. The thing that this doesn't do is time-based processes. This is all frequency-based, hence spectral effects. It's really, really deep, and I'm not going to even try to explain it just because I can't in this short review. But I thought rather than do that, I think explaining it and kind of understanding it too much is, while well, there's nothing wrong with it, it's maybe missing the point. Here it is with an instance of Spec Ops across each of the four tracks. I don't think that's something I'd necessarily do in a production, use it on everything. But here it is on everything, and I'll bypass everything so that you can hear how much of an impression it's made on the sound. That's without. Pulling these back in again. So, quite a difference. Here it is on this acoustic guitar. And to jump in quickly on, for example, this drum machine over here. and quickly having a look at this drum loop that I have. I'm sure you can hear it's making quite an impression on the sound. However, what's it doing? Well, to begin with, you set up your analysis in the analysis block. That's uh, where you choose your windowing and your the size of the FFT. That's basically how many of these little frequency bins it's splitting the signal up into. That has a big impact on processor use and on latency. So you do need to be careful in use during a mix because if you've got it running at, uh, at a high FFT size, then you're going to get spikes in CPU usage, and we all know how annoying they can be. So it's a thing to keep in mind. You'll notice some patch leads going around. This is modular and uh, it's very modulatable. So you can set up modulators, uh, sources and destinations and do lots and lots of interesting things like that. And then uh, once we go through this geometry section, which has a huge impact on the sound, uh, if I just quickly... See what I mean? It does an enormous amount to it. Useful tool tips that pop up, although I found the manual's very clear on what's going on. Uh, there's a spectral compander, which uh, there's one compander for every one of those uh, FFT frequency bins. So if you're running a really high, I mean, in this case, we're running over a thousand spectral companders, one per band. So uh, things get extremely, uh, extremely busy in terms of processing. And then you've got Three effect slots. There are 36, I believe it was, effects. Uh, and they're kind of, a lot of them are quite unfamiliar things, but uh, they're based on doing things like amplitude-based things. So it might solo one of the effect regions when it crosses a certain threshold, or it might uh, make one of the frequency bins within that uh, effect region take precedence over the others or possibly leak or spread into others. Or it, it's You have to have a look at the manual. There's way too much to discuss here. However, for each of those, they are in series. They go one, two, three, top to bottom, one into the other. And you can set effect regions, one of three effect regions, which you set using the start control and the width control to see how much of the spectrum you wish to cover which you, with each of these effect regions. And then you can process those frequency bins within those. You, you get used to it fairly quickly. You'll notice some modulation happening here in this amount uh, that's kind of like an intensity control for the uh, for the effect you've got dialed in, which is coming from this sine wave. There's uh, some different modulation sources, and you can modulate uh, any of these available destinations, and things can get very complicated very quickly. I've lost most of a day to this thing, just idly having a bit of a look. 
What do I think of this? I think you could lose yourself in this for days. Um, whether or not this is going to get much use on a typical jazz tracking session, I rather doubt it. But if you need to really mangle sounds around and create something new out of some existing audio, this is fantastic. And I stand by my earlier comment that I think explaining it too much misses the point of it. It's it's a thing for experimentation. And as long as you understand the user interface and the operating principles, it doesn't really matter if you don't know what it's going to sound like before you turn that control. And I think that's very much the case with Spec Ops. Do I like it? I like it a lot more than I expected to, actually. This is great fun. And if you enjoy modular environments and mangling sounds and have a use for that, then definitely you should check it out.